Good afternoon, everyone. Um, beautiful day down here in Cornwall today. I was just thinking, um, isn't it ironic that ever since, even before the lockdown, um, since the coronavirus became a more real threat in the UK, that it's been beautiful weather. Um, obviously, I can't speak for up country and London and Newcastle and Liverpool and Birmingham, but down here in Cornwall has been bloody beautiful. Um, particularly hot today, which is lovely. I'm just out in the car at the minute. Um, so I thought, right, I'll just stop and do a quick video on the loan signings this season, rating them. Um, would we keep them? Would do you reckon they want to come, etc.? Want to stay, rather, etc. So, um, excuse my eye. I've woken up with a bit of a puffed up eye today. I don't know what's wrong with it. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's just swollen up. But yeah, I'll power through. Right, starting with, I'm going to start with... Uh, Jetro Williams. Now, um, to me, this is yes. If we can get him at the right price due to his injury. Um, when he did play, or this half the season that he got, he was brilliant, I thought. A bit careless in possession at times. Um, I think he could tighten up a little bit defensively. However, going forward, great. Scored a couple of great goals. Big game player. I thought he overall looked a really, really good player. I think he dealt with Adama Traore uh, from Wolves um, as well as pretty much any other fullback has in the league this season. Um, I thought overall, yeah, it's just a case of is his knee going to go again and again and again, which if it does, obviously is a big problem. So I think if we can get him at the right price, if we can avoid paying over the odds for a player that is probably going to get injured again, at some point, I think it's a yes. So, if it comes to next season, perhaps, or the season after, if his knee does go again and he misses another four or five, say half a season, we're not losing out money. It's not like we, we paid like 25 million and invested 25 million in the player who's going to be injured most of the season. So, on that count, I would say yes. Now, I know he wasn't loaned, but Andy Carroll, because we got him on a free, I thought, and it's an interesting one, I thought I would put him in the mix of this video um it's a difficult one for me because nostalgia is a very very real thing with Andy Carroll um all right we're not gonna have to pay any money for him because he's a free agent and he's he's on a pay per play wage as far as I know and if we were going to keep him I think we need to maintain that sort of deal because he's injured quite a lot um, is he good enough? We haven't seen enough of him from what when he has played. I think he's done okay. Um, they got two or three, three or four assists. I found he could get a goal. I did in my ratings video, I put him as a could do better, um, purely because he hasn't scored yet. And when he does score, that'll be a great moment. Um, it's not relevant to his performance, but I think he needs to take number seven, he needs to take that have that taken off him as soon as possible but anyway um it'd be worth extending him i reckon another 12 month or you know when this i think the season this season will be finished when the league comes back he could come back play really well and get over his injury score three or four five goals in the in the league and maybe give him a two-year deal but i reckon another 12 month deal to see how he is see how he is from the end of the season now um right so we got williams out the way got Carol out of the way. Danny Rose, very similar to Williams, but for different reasons. Um, first of all, would he want to stay? I think he would, because especially now that the Euros has been postponed for 12 months, it's another year where he can't afford to sit on the bench at Tottenham. And if it comes to being sold, he don't know, you know, he could go back and say no to Newcastle, and we don't know where he's going to go. Leeds, if Leeds come up and want him, I believe he'll go to Leeds. However, if he's good enough between now and the end of the season, I think he'd be a good shout. The only thing holding me back would be money. I think he'd be on hefty wages. And Daniel Levy would, even though he has only have 12 months left on his contract, which is crucial in the negotiating, I think Daniel Levy will push it just a little bit more. Where most clubs in Newcastle position would stump up the extra million, million and a half, but Mike Ashley and Newcastle will say no. We shall see. If it was in my shoes, I would see how he goes from the end of the season. If he doesn't improve, 
I would probably go for Williams, but we'll see. Um, next on the list, Nabil Bentaleb. To me, I would say no. Um, I don't think he's done anything wrong. Um, he hasn't been amazing. He's been like a five, six, six and a half out of ten every time he's played. But is he better than what we've already got? Is he better than Shelby? No. Is he better than Matty Longstaff? Uh, maybe, just through experience. Is he better than Sean Longstaff? They're about the same at the moment. Is he better than Isaac Hayden? No. Isaac and John Joe are several rungs above him. The Longstaff boys are there or thereabouts. Sean of last season is a better player than Nabil Bentaleb. But um, he's, he's not a bad player. I just don't think he offers a lot. He, he's a lot of safe passes, sideways passes. Um, he doesn't lose the ball, but when he does lose the ball or we lose the ball, he doesn't. He's not over enthusiastic to get it back. He's not going to be one that's running around, steaming into tackles, intercepting play, and being busy in the midfield. Um, he doesn't offer the defensive stability that some like Isaac Hayden does. He's got a good technique, but he's not a John Joe Shelby. He's not a goal scorer. So, Nabil, all right, everyone knows this is pre season at the moment. When the season resumes, he might come back a lot fitter, a lot sharper. And he could improve but as things stand he's just a steady metronome of a player but there's nothing I don't think there's any one or does he have attributes that Hayden or Shelby don't no so that's that for me um, Valentino Lazaro hmm difficult one I think it's known that he wants to go back to Inter Milan and that he's using Newcastle as a platform to advertise himself to Inter Milan, which a lot of people have criticised that. I don't blame him. Don't blame him at all. Obviously, he's contracted to Inter Milan, um, and he's been sent out on loan to prove himself to Inter Milan. That's what he's doing. So, fair play. Um, so, he wants to go back to Inter Milan. It all depends whether Inter wants him back. Um, if he carries on playing like he did... Against the in the West Brom game in particular in that attacking role, I think definite if we can get him at an affordable price, hundred um, percent. There's not a lot of right wingers around Premier League level right wingers around for Newcastle to get for a team like Newcastle to get. So I think Lazaro, if he continue, continues to improve um, and stay away from right back. You don't, we don't need you a right back power, and he doesn't need to be a right back. He, he was dreadful against Arsenal. I, I think it was unfair. I don't see him as a right back or a right wing back. So if he can continue as a right winger, he's got decent cross on him. He's fast. He's he's good, good skill, good ball control. I think if he carries on as he has been recently, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I think he could be a good signing come the end of the season. So, um, there we are. There we are with the lone players. Um, obviously talked about Andy Carroll as well. Um, I'm going to do another video on a major like permanent sign-ins. Probably tomorrow. I might do one later on. Uh, Jill Hinton, Alan Samaximam, Emil Kraft, etc. Um, go into a bit more depth than I did about in the ratings videos. Hopefully my eye will go back to normal by then. I wouldn't look like such a fucking ogre on screen. But we'll see. Um, yeah, so... Got nothing more to say about that, really. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Anyone who watches it. If any comments, agree, disagree, whatever, not a problem. Stick them in the comment section. Call me out for chat and shit or a little well done, whatever. Um, last thing to say, obviously, coronavirus is a significant threat um, I've got my own opinions about it in terms of testing and whatnot but anyway um, the amount of people I've seen in the last few days ignoring the rules about social distancing um, is quite shocking really um, on the whole down here in Cornwall pretty good I went for a run around the town centre where I live and it's pretty good but went down to Little the other day and it's sort of shocking um, please these rules have been put in place for a reason and the older generation, more than anything, seem to be ignoring it. You are among the bracket, the most vulnerable. Um, just listen. Just listen. 
I know it's been crap, but it could be so much worse. We're not we're not in World War. We're not, get, we're not getting bombed. Um, so yeah, it could be so much worse. Hopefully, the lockdown will be lifted. Is it next Monday? Was the three week mark? Um, see what the PM has to say. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll be soon. But while it's happening, it could be so much worse. Let's just play the game. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Stand by for the next one. See you later.